I want to talk about three areas and three things that I truly believe are kingdom secrets that can turn anyone for that matter to become a giant in the spirit. Number one, the power of a systemic prayer life. Please write it down. Welcome to Kingdom Mirrors TV. On this channel, we post edifying content for your spirit and daily living. Kindly like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your post notification to get notified each time we post. Thank you, stay blessed, and enjoy this video. The power of a systemic prayer life. Please underline the word systemic. Many people teach on prayer. Many people pray. Many people talk about prayer. But many believers have not been able to draw the richness that is captured in the prayer ministry. Largely because their prayer life is not systemic. In Acts chapter 3 and verse 1, we are considering the power of a systemic prayer life. Acts chapter 3 and verse 1. Let's read together. Ready? One to read. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. Somebody say the hour of prayer. The hour of prayer. There was a time dedicated. It became a ritual. It became habitual. They even named it the hour of prayer. You see, the power of prayer it's not just in the activity alone, but the consistency. The consistency of that fellowship. Now, I've taught you that prayer achieves many things in the life of the believer. Let me quickly do a recap for you. There are four, four things that prayer achieves in the life of the believer according to scripture. Number one, prayer is a channel for fellowship and transformation. Fellowship and transformation. I think that is Luke 29. Did I get that right? And verse 9 or thereabout. The Bible says, And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment became white and glistering. So prayer was given primarily as a tool for fellowship that culminates to our transformation. Transformation is the name given to the process that makes you Christ-like in experience. He says, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. So that is the first biblical assignment of prayer as a tool for fellowship and transformation. Number two, prayer is a tool or a platform to make petitions and obtain requests. Prayer is a platform to make petitions and obtain requests the bible says that should be matthew chapter 11 i believe and verse 24 jesus was teaching on the subject of faith and then he veers off to talk about prayer mark is it mark help me mark mark 11 24 he said what things soever ye desire when ye pray did i get that right believe that ye receives them and thou shall have them so there is a prayer request called what things soever no matter what it is it says when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them hallelujah Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 we read it earlier on it says to be anxious for nothing it says, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, let your request be made known to God. So prayer is a platform for making petitions and obtaining requests. Number three, prayer is a platform for creation and spiritual legislation. Prayer is a platform for creation and spiritual legislation. God is not the only person you talk to when you pray. In prayer, you can talk to things. In prayer, you can talk to spirits. You are given the liberty to use the platform of prayer and create possibilities in your life. Are we together? Even God who call it the things that be not as though they were. You can create spiritual possibilities. You can make decrees. It says, and thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established not unto everybody, unto the one who made the decree. 
thou shalt decree a thing your bible says where the word of a king is there is power so prayer is a platform that allows you to create possibilities program possibilities in your life finally prayer is a platform for warfare and intercession prayer is a platform for warfare and intercession warfare establishing the victory of Christ over your life and warding of the forces the arsenals of darkness that continue to fight the speakings of God over your life these are among others I believe the four biblical assignments of prayer in the life of the believer but you see your prayer life will not be rich until it is systemic in the case of the apostles they had the hour of prayer and the bible calls it the ninth hour in the life of jesus we find his prayer life the bible gives us a picture of his prayer life in mark chapter 1 from verse 34 look his busy schedules and see how he was able to carve out a systemic approach to his prayer life mark 1 let's begin our reading from verse 34 mark 1 34 help us media the bible says and he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils this is from his crusade now he suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him 35 we're reading to 37 the bible says and in the morning rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed this was a a a habitual practice of jesus because his day was full of activities you need to picture the life of Jesus. Everybody thronging upon him, moving from city to city. And he did not have that time to pray in the afternoon. But early in the morning, it was a habit. The apostles also started learning it. The Bible says, Simon and they that were with him followed after him. Jesus was not just prayerful. He was systemic with his prayer. Look up please. Many believers are not able to excel and enjoy the wealth and the blessings that come with the prayer ministry because we have not created a systematized approach to prayer. We largely freelance our prayer or motivated by the reality of a situation that challenges you. Then you may now give some attention. Are we together? Believers were never designed to pray only during emergencies. Believers were never designed to pray only during needs. Believers were never designed to pray only when you have a program. The Bible says in Luke 18 and verse 1 that he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 1 Thessalonians 5 17, it says to pray without season. It doesn't mean pray from morning till night. It means be consistent in your prayer. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to listen very carefully. Let's assume that you are a student in any of the high institutions of learning here. Because of the nature of your life and the face of life that you are in, you may have a bit of luxury of time because your focus will largely be schoolwork and then you have the luxury of time. And it is possible to pray at any time once you are not having your lectures you may have fellowship or just your personal time but now fast forward imagine that that same student now becomes a worker say in an oil and gas company you use that student template they will first suck you out of the work are we together now and when they throw you away both your spiritual life and your means your stream of income will both dry up you have to reinvent a system that now suits the current context of your life this is the problem with many believers you had the luxury say for instance you were not married at that point you had the luxury you could lock up yourself for three days you didn't need to obtain permission from any man as a woman 
you can lock yourself and pray now you are married you are a wife probably a mother you have other responsibilities that luxury of freelancing your prayer life is no longer there because being prayerful will not be an excuse for failing in your family life are we together so you have to now create a system it takes intelligence to pray effectively not just spirituality that intelligence component is where believers have thrown it away we just have a blind zeal there needs to be intelligence when you study your life and you find out the way that God works with you if you are a leader and you have a lot of commitment towards people you would want to maximize your night times you want to maximize your mornings in principle I have found the night times to be the best for me for various reasons because it affords you a greater sense of focus are we together now there are moments where you can take dedicated times out maybe a whole day but generally speaking there are certain levels of growth I'm saying this sincerely ask any great leader they will tell you the convenience of prayer right now for them was not the way it used to be years ago if you are to be honest because of the responsibilities that have come upon that person you can be praying and someone comes to disturb you now you are living in the same house with five of your relatives and while you are praying the one who is not born again is enjoying himself and playing one song and just when you want to position your your heart to, and you are in the same house you can't drive them remember you are trusting god for the salvation of that person are we together or while you are trusting god to increase you now you live in a house where you are a christian and you are surrounded say by non-christians and certain liberty of expression that you may have you understand you can shout you can roll you can do everything now you are limited in many ways listen believers you will not grow spiritually and you will not be rich in your prayer life until you study your life and in partnership with the holy spirit design an effective template that insists that you do not compromise on prayer regardless your schedule because the devil is a master at giving you a justification i'm busy you know the way my life is and two days becomes one week becomes one year and before you know it you will simply be admiring the days when you used to be prayerful and there are consequences according to scripture when believers do not invest time to pray you have bought the potential for quality fellowship with the spirit of god and then all of these things that i mentioned will no longer be found in your life is someone learning you want to gain mastery in training any believer you have to train them to understand the power of a systemic or systematized prayer life there are people who come to pray and you know they say a lot of childish things plus Jesus minus Satan and that's the end of it that's the prayer or they say what we know to be the Lord's prayer as a pastor of a ministry that's your entire prayer life no you can't walk that way are we together no wonder the life that should emanate as we speak as we preach and as we lead is not there and you find out that there's a lot of energy that is being dissipated but the life component that is ignited to a rich prayer life is not there for instance you can hear a preacher preach preach sincerely and what he's saying is not a lie except that your spirit bears witness that there is information but there is no life and life there does not mean flying up and down there is there is the strength let me tell you a healthy secret place cannot be hidden no it's not about the huskiness of your voice it's not about auditory there is a signature of life that is upon your speakings you cannot pretend a healthy prayer life no you cannot act and pretend a healthy prayer life believers hear me zaria hear me if you do not understand the power of prayer you will give evil 
the right and the credence to reign over territories when men do not know how to pray and subdue territorial powers we are talking of advanced levels of prayer where it's not just needs you are standing like a watchman over a territory and insisting allowing the things that must happen within a territory or disallowing it by the authority that you have are we together yes sir there are controlling spirits across territories that manipulate the thinking of people, causing them to act in certain ways that are antichrist. It is the responsibility of the believer within that territory. Did the Bible not say in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus teaching from verse 13 to 16, it says you are the light. You are the light of Zaria. Believers hear me. It says you are the salt of the earth. The, the assignment of the salt is twofold. One, to add taste or value. Number two, to preserve. You are not salt if you are not contributing towards your prayer life. In the name of Jesus, we stand here as salt. Darkness will not reign over Zaria. It's not just when you gather as a prayer group. It's not just when you gather here in Koinonia. It must become a lifestyle to make your contribution as far as sanitizing the territory to make the purposes of God find a free course. It says, I, Paul, desire to come to you once and again, but Satan hindered us. If Satan can hinder men, he can hinder things. Things like many manifestations of favor coming to you can be hindered. Is someone learning? I made up my mind that my environment will always remain an environment of pro-advancement, an environment that makes it conducive for the purposes of God to find expression. Believers, hear me. In the name of Jesus, you must have a systematized prayer life. As a father over your family, you must have a systematized prayer life. You see, our parents used to practice something called morning devotion. I know that that may not really be enough to give you a robust spiritual life, but it was better than nothing. Even though it was just five, ten minutes of just sharing briefly, it was consistent and many of us the bank of spiritual knowledge that we have came from that experience you would find out that they just spent 10 minutes in a day in truth i would tell you you would need more than that if you want to attain stature in the spirit but it is still better than nothing and don't forget that they were working with the limit of the knowledge they had so god would vet them based on the knowledge available for them they made the most they made sure that every month they bought you devotional remember or every year there were others that were yearly there were others that were monthly they insisted whether you liked it or not and remember sometimes you will not do it for two weeks then you will repent like i used to do and then cover all the ones that you didn't do then backslide again hmm. but now you must get to a point where you have the prayer ministry as a revelation listen prayer is not all about power Prayer is about negotiating with the realm of the spirit to manifest possibilities. It's not just all about anointing. Uh -uh. Are we together? Do not allow the devil to destroy your loved ones under your watch. Do not allow the devil to to invade a territory under your watch. Do not allow yourself to be bankrupt. Listen, in the name of Jesus, may it never happen that the time will come in Zaria where there is no longer evangelism. People are not being saved. People are not being healed. People are not being delivered. That the churches are now facing all kinds of pain, persecution, no increase in membership. May it never happen under our watch in the name of Jesus. It is our responsibility to stand pray it says they are taken for a prey and none say it restore hallelujah